Hey guys, it's Darwin, and after two decent sized hikes, about 50 to 60 nights overall, and a ton of requests, it's time for me to do a full review of my Z Pax Plexamid. All right, before we jump into the review, let me first start off by saying I do not work for Z Packs. I am not paid by Z Packs. I'm not sponsored or endorsed. However, Z Packs did give me the Plexamid for free, but it was not in trade for a review, and I'm not being paid to make this video. It's just not my style, guys. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, after 800 miles on the Arizona Trail, 225 miles from coast to coast in Scotland on the TGO Challenge, and a ton of different weekend trips and section hikes, I think that I'm finally ready to give my final thoughts about the Z-Pax Plexamid. And before I talk about what I like and what I don't like, let's go over the specs. The Plexamid is a one-person DCF trekking pole tension tent, which means that it requires trekking poles or standalone poles to set it up. It's not freestanding and it requires tension from the stakes and the guy lines. Like I said, it is made from a DCF or Cuban fiber material. It takes one trekking pole or standalone pole to set it up versus some of the two trekking pole tents out there on the market. And it is a fully enclosed shelter, meaning that it has full netting completely around it an eight inch tall bathtub floor, one single rainbow zipper door, and a vestibule with two storm doors. The Plexamid has 10 guy lines, but only requires a minimum of six stakes to set it up. And like most of all z packs tents, you can get it in different colors and different materials, which can add to the weight and the durability of the tent. Now, my version is the regular olive drop version, and on my scale, it comes in at 14 ounces or 397 grams. Now, recently, z packs has made a few updates to the tent, uh, switching out the line locks and the line, which I think dropped a little bit of weight, but mine comes in at 14 ounces. Now, there are a ton of different reviews and opinions about this tent out there, but let's talk about what I like and what I have disliked about using this tent for about 50 to 60 nights this year. So the first thing that I like about this tent is obviously its weight. For being a one person, fully enclosed shelter and only weighing 14 ounces, what's not to like? 14 ounces for a full tent is insane. And I think that this is the lightest one person tent on the market. Not to mention it only uses one trekking pole versus some of the other one person tents out there that use two trekking poles to set it up. So minimal setup when it comes to using uh, trekking poles or a tent pole and only being 14 ounces is just insane. And that's what I really dig about this guy. The second thing that I really like about the Plexamid is the headroom. Unlike really any other tent out there on the market, the Plexamid has a squared off peak. Now, most one person shelters or single wall shelters have a, a meeting peak, which means that the back wall and the front wall kind of meet at this point, which can cause the back wall to kind of set up close to your head. So if you're six one like me, you're sitting in a tent like that, a lot of times you're kind of sitting forward to make sure that your head doesn't smack the back wall. Well. On the Plexamid, what they did was they designed this little bridge, this little box on the top that has two carbon fiber stays in there, which allows that back wall to be separated from the front wall, creating more internal room and more internal headspace. Being 6'1", I need all the room I can get in a one person tent, so I really dug that feature. Now there are some reports of some people out there that have actually had their stays snap on them in the field. And I think that's why the Plexamid is currently unavailable on z -Pack's website. But luckily, mine was one of the ones before they had a bad batch of carbon rods. So I have not had a problem with this tent after about a thousand miles of packing it up, setting it up, and uh, yeah, no problems with the carbon stays yet, but I've heard that has been an issue with some people. 
And the third thing that I like about the Pleximid is basically what I like about all of Z-Pax's tents, and it's the fact that it is made of DCF. Now, for me, it's not necessarily about the weight, but as I've said in the past, I think DCF is the king of tent materials. Why is it the king of tent materials? Well, it is lightweight. It has a really good tear strength, so the material, even though it's light, it's really strong. It sheds water like no other material, and it dries out quickly. And not to mention, it can be seam taped, so all of the seams on the inside are fully taped, making DCF virtually waterproof. Not waterproof, but highly water resistant. So I think it is the best material for a tent. All right, so what do I dislike about the Pleximid after using it for a year? Well, the first thing that I really dislike about this tent is its setup. So after using the duplex for about two years and putting all those miles on it, um, it is a really easy tent to set up. You put down your four corners, you put up your two trekking poles, you put tension, and it's done. Super easy to set up. The Pleximid, because it has all these strange shapes to it, and because it has 10 guy lines, if you're using all 10 guy lines like me to get the most room, it is a bit of a pain to set up. Hell, after using it for 50 to 60 nights, I still have not mastered the setup on this tent. A lot of times I find myself pitching it, then I have to go back, readjust things, put out the guy lines at different angles, just to get it to set right. So it is a very complicated tent to pitch in my experience. And speaking of all the guy lines and why I have to use tin, my second dislike about the Pleximid is its overall length. Now I am 6'1", so I need all the room I can get in the tent, and I find myself, even on a real good setup with this tent on good flat ground, where I get a decent, almost perfect pitch, being on a three inch pad like a Thermarest Neo Air and having my 20 degree quilt, my toe box, touches the wall. Now, usually that's not a big problem, but if it is a condensation heavy night or if it's raining, my foot box is going to get wet. And then on the reverse side of that, my face sits really close to the pitch of the wall. And I mean, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, so I breathe a lot of hot air at night, which the hot air is going up the wall, which probably doesn't help with the condensation issue. In my experience over the past year, this has been a pretty condensation heavy tent for me. And with that being said, all single wall tents are gonna have condensation problems. It's just something that's gonna happen with those tents. There's not enough room for airflow to really happen, uh, even with the venting, so it's going to happen. But I feel like with my face being that close to the wall and breathing hot air up it, it's probably not helping with those condensation issues. So. That is a big problem for me with this tent. I wish that the guys at Z-Pax would have made it just like an inch or two longer and it would probably be pretty perfect for me. And that brings us to the third thing that I dislike about the Pleximid and that is its packability. So what do I mean about packability? Well, you would think with a one person tent that only weighs 14 ounces that it would pack down much smaller than this, but nope, that's it. And if you compare it to the duplex, they're basically about the same size on packability, which is kind of a bummer. One of the great things about going down to something that's smaller and lighter is that you can stuff it into a smaller area, which takes up less real estate in your pack. Well, because of that bridge that they put in to extend the headroom, it doesn't get down any smaller than that. As you can see, that's about the size of the bridge that's in there. So basically that little square doesn't allow you to be able to stuff it down into a stuff sack. So I do have to roll it. So the packability of the Pleximid is really no different than putting the duplex in my pack. So that was a dislike of mine. So now that I've talked about what I like and what I don't like, um, how's the tent held up over the past year of using it? About a thousand miles, like I said, 50 to 60 nights, I've had this tent in a ton of different environments from the Arizona desert floor to high alpine areas like I'm in right now uh, to up in the Sierra just last week in the snow and super sharp rocks to over in Scotland with a ton of rain and wind and the Pleximid is held up great. 
aside from snapping a line lock over in Scotland, which was really nothing to do with Z-Packs, uh, that was made by line lock. All Joe could say is, I didn't make those line locks. That's not my fault. <laughs> it has been great. Uh, I have no tears in it. There's no holes in the mesh, no holes in the bathtub. I haven't snapped a line yet. The seams are still holding up great. And yeah, it's in pretty phenomenal shape after using it for a thousand miles. So overall, holding up just as I would expect one of these tents to hold up. And what are my final thoughts on the Plexamed? Uh, would I recommend this tent to somebody? Sure. The Plexamid is a great tent. And if you're not tall like me, if you're not 6'1 and up, you're 5'6", five, 5'9", five, under, and you're looking to get a really minimal setup tent for your first through hike, looking to shed some weight and get down low, this is a phenomenal choice. But in answer to the question, do I like this over my duplex? Um, no. Actually, if I was going to go rehike the PCT, um, I would take my duplex over the Plexamed. So if you're a person that already owns the duplex and you're thinking about making the switch and the upgrade, I honestly don't think it's worth it. Only a five ounce difference. The new duplex weighs 19 ounces. So at only five ounces, but you get more room, you get two doors, two vestibules, in my opinion, an easier setup. I think the duplex is the best tent that Z-Packs has ever made. And personally, one of my favorite tents. So if I were you, would I make the switch and go with the Plexamid? No. Save your money, take that five ounce weight penalty and use an extra trekking pole to get that extra room. It's just more of a versatile tent. But again, if you're looking at getting a new tent, you're never gonna have another person in your tent. You want that minimal setup. The Plexamid is a pretty, phenomenal choice. Now at the time of this video, the Plexamid retails for $549, which I think is like a $50 difference uh, with the duplex. So about $50 and only five ounces for double the room, uh, a little more versatility and double doors. I'll leave that up to you. So have you recently picked up the Plexamid? Are you having any of those carbon fiber stay issues? Uh, are you a duplex user that's thinking about making the switch? Or what is your favorite tent and what are you currently using in the field? Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.